This video is a beginner's guide to LumaFusion, one of the most powerful apps for editing on iOS. I'll be using the latest version, which is LumaFusion 2.3. I'll be using an iPad Pro. Bear in mind the layout will be different on an iPhone. The latest version of LumaFusion 2.3 has added some essential new features too, so I'll talk about those a bit as well. So let's get quick started. Open the app and give permission for the app to access your photos. The app needs this, otherwise it can't import video files from the drive of your device. And now you're ready to start your first project. To start a new project, tap on the plus button at the bottom left of the screen. Now a box pops up. At the top of this box, you type in the title of the project. I'll just call this, I don't know, Luma Fusion Tutorial. Uh, you can also choose the frame rate and the aspect ratio. Um, the default from installation is 30 frames per second frame rate and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Best practice is to choose the same frame rate as the video you're going to edit. An exception to this is if you are creating slow motion. For example, you might have footage at 60 frames per second, but want it to play at 30 frames per second, so it plays as slow motion, in which case choose 30 frames per second here. Aspect ratio is the shape and dimensions of the frame. 16 by 9 is kind of the most common these days, but you might want a square 1 by 1 ratio or a widescreen ratio. And there's a brief description here to let you know what you're choosing. You don't have to choose now as you can change these settings later. So to start your project, click the plus sign again. So this is the LumaFusion interface as seen on an iPad Pro at least. And here's a little handy feature for those starting out. Actually, anyone, unless you have a photographic memory of the button layout, because see this cog icon bottom right? That's the help and settings button. Now, if you tap and hold that, Luma Fusion labels every button on the screen. Like with many other editing programs, the video is laid out in strips on the top while the audio is laid out in strips on the bottom. This blue line down the center of the timeline tells you where you are in the video that you're editing. And this is called the playhead. At the top of the playhead is a number at the moment showing 000. And until you add some clips into your timeline, that won't be able to move anywhere. So let's add some clips. The first thing you need to do is import some media files. At the very top left of the screen is an icon which changes depending on which source you currently have selected. At first, you probably have this icon which looks like a kind of flower or something. In fact, this is a line drawing of the iOS Photos app icon. When you tap this in LumaFusion, it opens up a window called Sources. Bear in mind, this icon will change depending on the source selected. Files, imported, story block, and so on. For the moment, all you need is the top item in the list, photos. So tapping this takes you to the content in your photos on the device you're editing on, be it an iPhone, iPad, or some other iOS device. However, in LumaFusion, media files can come from a number of sources. Basically, these two buttons here at the top give you access to all your media. So I'm going to get my video from here. Uh, this contains clips from a previous video, which I have consolidated into one folder. There's a variety of ways to add a clip to your project's timeline. The simplest way is to tap and hold the video clip and now drag and drop it onto your timeline. Another way to add video is to double tap it and the video drops onto the timeline wherever the playhead sits. Either that or you can use this insert clip button below the preview window and yet another way is to select the clip in the left window, tap and hold the video in the preview window, then drag and drop onto the timeline. You'll see that the video and audio combined appears on the timeline. The audio is still there, but it won't appear on a separate audio track unless you unlink it from the video. And this can be done by tapping this audio unlink button at the bottom here, which moves the audio from the video into a separate track. So now you can also see the video appears in the preview window, this window here on the top right. 
And if you tap the play button here, that video begins to play in the timeline, moving right to left. The time counter at the top of the playhead starts to count. Now, the counter counts in minutes, seconds and frames, so the fractions of a second you see behind the point depend on the frame rate you have chosen. For example, if you have your project set to 30 frames per second, when the counter gets to 0.29, it will move to the next second uh, when you advance one more frame. These two icons here are the undo and redo buttons, so if you make a mistake and want to undo what you just did, tap the left pointing undo arrow. If tapping undo was a mistake and you want to redo it again, tap the right pointing arrow. So you'll probably find yourself using these arrows quite a bit. Luckily they appear wherever you can change anything, but they appear in different places so you have to kind of look around for them. If I go into edit this clip on the timeline by tapping the pencil icon at the bottom, the new screen has the undo redo buttons at the top in the middle. To close this window and get back to the main timeline, tap that arrow in the top left corner. The preview window either shows you the clip selected in the left window or the current position of the playhead. When you select a video from the photos folder, you get these little yellow brackets at each end. They're called handles and they can be used to decide which part of the clip you want to move to the timeline. Because yes, you can just move the whole clip, but most of the time you probably just want to use a portion of the clip. So tapping and holding a handle, you can move it left or right to mark the beginning, then again to mark the end. You can also use these markers below beside the play button. So play the video or move this white position marker to the point where you want the clip to start. If you tap that handle button, it moves the handle to that position. Same with the right end handle. You don't have to be 100% accurate because of course you can adjust these start and end points once it's on the timeline. The thing is, while the main timeline can be zoomed in and out, the preview video can't. So if you have a long video clip in the preview window, getting an accurate in and out point can be a bit tricky, in which case what I do is get it approximately right in the preview and then fine tune it on the timeline. In the group of three buttons in the bottom left corner, the middle button is called headers and opens up a few controls for each track. And most of these controls you are probably familiar with if you've used editing software before. So locking a track to make sure no changes can be made to it. The I button to stop viewing a track and the mute unmute button for the audio. So these are standard sort of track controls. This little arrow here switches the way you edit. You're either in insert mode or overwrite mode. Insert or overwrite makes quite a big difference to how LumaFusion operates when placing clips and trimming them in the timeline. In insert mode, dragging a clip to the timeline inserts it between clips on the timeline. The later clips then slide along to make space. Imagine you have a bunch of people sitting on a bench and someone else shows up and wants to sit in the middle so everyone has to move along to create room for them. So I drag this clip and move it over to the timeline and now I get this insert symbol at the beginning of the clip. And when I drop the clip, the later clips all shuffle along so nothing gets deleted. And using insert mode makes it easier to add clips to your timeline in the middle of what you have already edited without having to select all the clips and then move them manually. So that's like a really useful feature. If I tap overwrite mode, you get this symbol instead and you can see that the insert overwrite arrow turns yellow and points down instead of along. Also note that the headers button turns yellow too. And this means that if you close the headers by tapping the headers button, you can still see which mode it's in. Blue for insert, yellow for overwrite. So in overwrite mode, dragging and dropping a clip onto the timeline will delete whatever you drop onto. The clips don't move to make space. So for example, if you're editing and you decide you want to replace a clip because it's working so well, the, you know, the pacing of it. So pick a new clip and then drop it on top of the old clip to replace it. Uh, that's if LumaFusion is in overwrite mode. Now, if the clip is a different length to the old clip, you will be asked what you want to do. The first option replaces the clip and keeps the same length. 
therefore the new clip will be cut to fit. You might choose this option if you're happy with the timing of the clip, you know, like the rhythm of the edit, and you just don't like this particular clip, you just wanna keep everything else though. And the second option keeps the new clip at the length it is. You might choose this option if you have a new clip and you have it at the exact length you need. So you want to replace a clip, but you don't want to keep the exact editing pacing. And so that's the basics of insert and overwrite mode. But this mode changes the way you adjust and trim clips on the timeline too. Generally speaking, using insert mode when you trim or expand a clip, later clips are shuffled along to compensate, but in overwrite mode, they don't. So here I have a series of clips on the timeline. Now, if I select one by tapping it, I get a white border to show it's now selected. And once you have selected a clip, you can edit it, copy it, and so on. But you'll see there are now these double arrows at the end of each clip. If I tap and hold one of these double arrows, I can drag it backwards and forwards to change the length of the clip. But if I'm in insert mode, the following clips adjust their position to compensate. It's kind of like they're stuck to that edit point. However, if I switch to overwrite mode, when I drag one of those double arrows back and forth, you can see that the following clips stay where they are. And if I move away from them, I leave a gap. If I move over them, everything below gets wiped out. So these two modes are, you know, they're very useful and they change how LumaFusion operates. Much of the time when we're editing, we are selecting, trimming, adjusting, swapping clips and so on. And getting familiar with insert and overwrite mode will really speed up your editing. So I recommend you spend a little bit of time on that. Sometimes we're editing and we need to expand one part of the edit. Maybe we want to add a new section. Normally this means selecting everything after that point and moving it aside, which can be time consuming depending on the software you're using. But with LumaFusion, you can use this insert override feature to save time. In insert mode, tap and drag those double arrows to stretch out the clip. Everything after is moved along the timeline. And now switch to overwrite mode and drag the end of this clip back. Now you're creating that extra space in the timeline without having to select everything and move it. So far, we've just been looking at using a single track. And of course it's possible to edit a simple video just using one track, but LumaFusion, like other major editing programs, allows you to have media on clips on multiple tracks. LumaFusion allows you to use up to six blue tracks and six green tracks. So remember, the blue tracks are video and audio, while the green tracks are audio only. Now I'll just add a new clip here and drag it onto the second video track. As with other editing software, the top clip is the one which is shown. So by placing the clip on a track above, you create an edit, but without disturbing the clips below. General editing practice is to edit using multiple tracks as this gives you the most flexibility, especially for complex projects with lots of clips. For example, if I want to try a new clip, I can just drop it onto a new track and see how it looks in the edit. And if I don't like it, I can delete it or swap it and what I have done before is untouched, or I can move it, trim it, and so on. And this way I can experiment without doing damage to what I've already edited. When I drop a clip on a new track, immediately a line appears from the new clip to the clip below, at the start of the new clip. And this is a link locking the new clip to the older clip. Now, if I tap and hold that older clip, you'll see I'm moving that clip and the new linked clip together. However, if I tap and hold the new clip, it does not move both clips, only the new one. And moving the new clip breaks the link until I place it on the timeline again. But if I don't want these clips to be linked at all, I can tap the link button at the bottom or in the header menu on the left and that linking line disappears. You can also use this button to link or relink clips together. When you add more clips in the tracks above, these clips also link to the clip on the first track below it. So when you add more clips on more tracks, they all become linked to the base clip on the bottom track. And let's add some music to our edit. If you tap the Photos app icon in the top left of the screen, you will open up the Sources menu again. You should find Storyblocks about halfway down. Tap this to open up the Storyblocks window. 
Now, Storyblocks offers all kinds of stock music, footage, sound effects, and so on. And some of it is free and some of it you will need to pay for. So click on the music folder to open it. You will get a whole load of music to scroll through. The free ones are marked with a yellow free label. And if you try to use one that isn't free, LumaFusion tells you you will need to subscribe to Storyblocks and how much per month or year that will cost you. So we can choose a free one by tapping and dragging it onto the timeline. The first time you choose a track of music this way, it needs to be downloaded first. So the green audio track is striped until it's finished downloading. If we tap play now, the music plays along, underscoring the video. Note, we can see the audio level of all the video and audio tracks represented visually. It looks a bit like a range of mountains. So the peaks of those mountains are the loudest parts of the audio. When you have a music track, these peaks often represent the beats of the music. So this can help you to add punch to your edit by cutting to the beat. With this track, you can see that it fades in and then boom, the rhythm kicks in. And when I'm editing a YouTube video, I often use this part of the track to lead into the next section or add some kind of punch to some titles. So because I can see where the first beat is, I can line up my titles or montage section to start on that first beat. Now you'll see that once again, the audio track immediately links to the main video clip above at the start of the audio clip. So again, if I move that video clip, everything linked will move with it, including audio clips. Now, if you're using music and spoken voice, you will have them on separate tracks. Normally, when we are editing spoken voice and music together, we drop the level of the music to allow the spoken voice to be heard better. Then we raise it again once the voice ends. And this is a technique that's been used in TV for decades and it's called audio ducking. And it makes the video more polished and professional. And like in other editing software in LumaFusion, you can go into the audio and add keyframes to fade the music up and down. But LumaFusion has a great feature which really makes this job so quick and easy. Select an audio or video clip which contains the spoken voice and tap the pencil button to edit it. Now tap configuration and tap master. Any audio clip on the timeline which has been selected as master will cause other audio tracks laying beneath to duck down in audio level. And so this saves a lot of time and you don't have to set any keyframes. LumaFusion does it all for you. In the settings of the project, you can also adjust how the ducking works. So you can set how much of a drop in audio level happens each time a master clip comes in. You can also adjust how fast this fade occurs. So tap the settings cog with the question mark in the bottom right corner of the screen. Now tap ducking and you will get the ducking preferences screen. I don't usually change any of these settings except the duck volume. I try to keep the music a bit quieter when I do voiceovers, so I drop this down to like minus 25 or minus 30, because if people are trying to hear you speak, it's better to be too quiet than too loud, I think. The playhead is also used to position a clip you want to split. Tapping the scissors button will split a clip along the line of the playhead, but you can also split a clip by tapping the clip simultaneously on either side of the playhead. You can delete a clip by selecting it and then tapping the trash can button. Again, this works differently depending on which mode you're in. When in insert mode, the clip is removed and the following clips move to fill in the gap. But in overwrite mode, they stay where they are. As well as media files, you can also add titles from the sources menu. Tap titles to open up a list of preset title templates. They're all static, but they can be animated using LumaFusion. To use one, simply tap and drag the title onto a video track. And if you want the title to appear over a video, drag it onto the video track above that video. And if you want it to appear over black, then place it on a video track without any video below. To edit the title, once it's on the timeline, tap the pencil button at the bottom, or you can just double tap the title on the timeline. And now you can see that this title is made from five different layers listed on the right. To see what each one does, you can tap the I button of each layer. So two of these layers are text layers. 
And these are the layers you will obviously want to edit to put your own text in there. To edit a text layer, double tap the text on the screen. The text editor opens up and you can see the text top right. And when you enter this screen, the text will already be selected. So if you want to replace it, just start typing. Now tap done, bottom right, to return to the title editor. Back in the title editor screen, you can also edit the opacity, size, font, and so on. And maybe this is a bit too big, so let's reduce the size of this text. Now that the text is smaller, some elements are out of place, so we can move those to fit the new text size. Usually you can just tap each element on the screen to select it, and then you can move it around just by using the tap, hold, drag method. But you can also use the edit controls on the right. Another way to add a title is to use the add clip button at the bottom of the screen, a plus sign in a circle. Tap that button and then tap overlay title. And this means the title will lay over any video at this point in the timeline. If you don't want to just cut between clips, you can add a transition in film or video, a transition includes such things as fading to black or fading one clip into the next clip. A simple fade is probably the most used and in LumaFusion, it's really easy to add one. Move to the playhead to the join of the two clips where you want the transition. Tap the add clip button and then tap transition. LumaFusion will now add a fade between the clips. And if you move the playhead away from the join, LumaFusion will add a fade to black from the point of the playhead. Another way to add transitions is to use the sources menu again. Tap the sources button and tap transitions. There's the cross dissolve and dip, which are the most commonly used. And then there's a few other presets you can choose here, like burst and zoom blur which are fun, but maybe a little bit gimmicky. It's up to you, get creative there. Now remember that a cross dissolve only works if you have extra footage before and after the cut. In other words, you need enough video in both clips to cover the length of the dissolve. Otherwise it won't work as you want it to work. One of the new features included in LumaFusion 2.3 is the multi-select function. And if you tap this button with the tick inside a box, you can now select multiple clips on the timeline. Either do this by tapping each clip or you can swipe across multiple clips to select them all. And once selected, you can drag them around or copy and paste them elsewhere into the timeline. So this is a useful feature that enables you to really speed up your editing process. To edit a video clip, either double tap the clip on the timeline or select the clip and tap the pencil button at the bottom. There's now four options to choose from, frame and fit, speed and reverse, audio and color and effects. With any of these, if it's possible to add keyframes, you will see this symbol with a group of circles and a cross in the last circle. Enable this and any changes will be saved as keyframes. So just to go through them quickly, Frame and fit allows you to adjust where the video is in the frame, size and cropping. You can even animate these settings using keyframes. There's also a bunch of presets in the window at the top in, on the right. Speed and reverse allows you to slow down or speed up a clip. Remember, if you want to keep your video looking smooth, to try to match the frame rates correctly. For example, a 60 frames per second video on a 24 frames per second timeline needs to be slowed to 40% to match the frames correctly. Otherwise, the video might look a little jerky. Now, audio gives you some settings to use as well as some effects like filters, EQs, and delays. In color and effects, you can adjust the color of any video. Either choose one of the presets, or if you want to use manual adjustment, then choose original. And now you will see a group of color and hue adjustments. So if you want to start with one of those, and then you can adjust it to your needs. This row of symbols switches between various options. Add LUTs. Vignettes, effects, various blur effects, some kind of more artistic effects, Luma keys for using with green screen. And the final button is where you can save any settings you have made so that you can apply them to other clips without having to adjust every setting again. One thing about LumaFusion is you can't edit on an external drive, which is what I'm used to doing with my MacBook uh, Pro and Adobe Premiere. 
With that setup, I can have all my project files in a folder on an external drive and none of these files ever need to reach my MacBook's hard drive. And this makes collecting and organizing files a lot easier than in LumaFusion, which is one of its weak points, I'm afraid. And this isn't made any better by the way Apple's iOS stores image files. What happens is files end up all over the place in different folders here, there and everywhere. And for that reason, I recommend that when you finish a project, you use LumaFusion's project consolidation feature, which collects all the files used in the video and places them in one folder. And once I have consolidated my project, what I do is go into the folders where I placed the files originally and then delete them all. Because otherwise, when you come to edit your next project, all the files from the previous projects will mix in with them. And as you can imagine, the more projects you create, the more files are going to pile up. So that is it for this video. Uh, that should cover the sort of basics of using LumaFusion. And if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.